Hello brothers and sisters. I wanted to do uh, a quick video on the latest article, um, I'm sorry, the, the latest news to come out of the Vatican uh, and Pope Francis' mouth, uh, stating that the Jews do not need Christ in order to be saved. Uh, this article is coming out of Arut Shiva. Um, I wanted to, before I, I delve into this article itself, I wanted to quote for you Matthew 3, 9, where Yeshua himself, Jesus said, uh, do not suppose that because Abraham is your father, uh, that you're set to go. And do not say within yourselves, well, Abraham is our father. Uh, salvation was to be preached starting in Jerusalem, in Israel, first to the Jew and also to the Gentile. But according to Pope Francis, he's saying here the Jews don't need Jesus to be saved. And I wanted to read to you a few um, statements from this article. It says here, uh, okay. All right, this is coming out of um, the Vatican. Although Jews cannot believe in Jesus Christ as the universal redeemer, they have a part in salvation because the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Number one, Jesus, this is preaching universalism, okay? Unless you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not be saved. You will have no part of Christ. He is the only door. He is the only gate. So this is preaching universalism. And as far as the gifts and calling of God being irrevocable, that promise was given to those who were born again believers in Jesus Christ. That, that promise was given to the children of God, those who had believed on Jesus' name and believed who he said he was. That that call and that promise is irrevocable. That once you're given to Jesus by the Father, he will not lose you. That's not talking about a universal salvation, which is what the Vatican is saying here. It says here, how Jews being saved while not believing in Christ can be possible remains an unfathomable mystery in the salvation plan of God, the Vatican says. Uh, it goes on to say here that Jews do not believe, do not need to believe in Jesus in order to be saved. And I wanted to combat that, um, along with all the other heresies that have been coming out of Rome for years, but especially since Pope Francis has taken office. And I'm sure that you've been aware of this article since it came out. Uh, I wanted to read you a few scriptures as well to combat this. Uh, Jesus was speaking here in Matthew 8, 11 and 12, and he said, uh, I tell you that many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness, and that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this article that I'm reading here says the sons of the kingdom likely refers to Israelites who are depending on their birth privilege as descendants of Abraham rather than faith in Jesus alone as their Messiah. And remember, in Matthew 3, 9, Yeshua said, do not suppose that because Abraham is your father, you're set to go or you're a son of the kingdom. Uh, in Matthew 17, 5, the father was speaking here and he says, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. The father was speaking to Jesus' Jewish followers here. Uh, when Jesus picked his disciples, they were Jewish men who were well acquainted with uh, the Jewish customs, the Jewish law, uh, traditions, and he picked these Jewish men to travel with him throughout Israel to preach the gospel. To who, primarily, first of all? The Jews. So for the Pope to come out and say, it doesn't shock me, it's, you know, it just shouldn't shock me anymore, these, these blasphemous things that are coming out of the Pope's mouth and the Vatican's mouth in Rome, um, but, uh, you know, for him to say that the Jews don't need Jesus in order to be saved, uh, it, it just confirms to me more and more and more, and is becoming more evident to those who are born-again believers that this is the one who looks like a lamb but speaks the words of the dragon. Anyone who knows their scripture, who knows Jesus, knows that that's utter blasphemy that he's preaching. But because people's eyes are blinded, their consciences are sealed, they don't know the scriptures, they're not filled with the Spirit, they're going to believe these lies. They're going to believe this universal preaching that as long as you're a good person, you're an Israelite, or even if you're a Gentile and you do good and you're a good person, that you're set to go. John 8, 24, Jesus was speaking to the Jews here, and he said, unless you believe I am he, you will die in your sin. He was speaking to Jews here, saying, unless you believe that I am who I say I am, that I am the Messiah, that I'm sent by the Father to be the Savior, you will die in your sin. Jesus often spoke to the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and, and the chief priests in the synagogues and in the temple, and he told them, he called them a brood of vipers. Uh, you are whitewashed tombs that men walk over and don't even know that they're walking over you. You're, you're dead man's bones. He said, you are of your father, the devil. And, and how did the Jews reply to that? 
They said, uh, Abraham is our father. Uh, you know, we, we were born of Abraham. God is our father. And Jesus said, no, you are of your father, the devil. And again, in Matthew 3, 9, Jesus said, do not just say because Abraham is your father, you're set to go. His message was being preached first to the Jews in Israel. Jesus came to his own, the scripture said, and his own did not receive him. But to those who do believe on his name, he gave the right to become the sons of God. Romans 1, 16 clearly states that the gospel is to, be, is to be preached to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, No one or no man comes to the Father except through me. Every disciple that Jesus chose uh, was preaching to a Jewish audience. Jesus chose Jewish disciples to go to a Jewish audience and preach the gospel. Uh, this is just another example of the lies, that the satanic lies, because it is the dragon who gives the man of sin his great seat and his great authority in, in this world right now. Remember, it says Satan is the ruler of this age right now, and he's working through the man of sin to deceive the whole world. Uh, the book of Revelation says that. He deceives the whole world. Jesus said only those who are his elect, those who are born again of his spirit, will not be deceived. And even then, you have to pay attention and ask God to give you discernment, because Jesus said if it were possible, even the very elect could be deceived. That is why it is so important that you let Jesus be your only guide, your only teacher, and his word be the only thing you stand on. Jesus said, I am that narrow gate, that narrow road. Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many go that way, Jesus said. Narrow is the way that leads to life, and only a few ever find it. And this is out of Jesus' own mouth. So this preaching coming out of the Vatican of Jesus being a universal redeemer, that is absolutely false. He says, to those who believed on his name, gave he the right to become the sons of God. We must be born again of God's spirit. Jesus clearly told Nicodemus at night, who was what? A Jewish leader. He was telling Nicodemus that unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And this was a Jewish leader. So this is clearly Satan's attempt working through Rome uh, in order to bring the world together in this, in this false peace and this lying peace, uh, you know, and, and universalist mindset. Um, and, and it's leading many into hell for eternity. Uh, remember, Jesus said, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Matthew 3, 9, what did Jesus say? Don't say because Abraham is our father, we're good to go. Uh, the scripture clearly teaches also that it is not the children of the flesh who are heirs according to the promise. Okay, it is those that are born of the spirit. Now, Jesus has called his own from every nation, tribe, and tongue, and he's redeemed a people for himself uh, from Israel as well. But we need to continue to reach out to the Jews. Do not believe the lies that are coming out of Rome that state that just simply because they're Jewish and their father is Abraham physically, that we don't need to reach them. This is absolute satanic lies. So I wanted to come out as Ephesians 5.11 state uh, and expose the deeds of darkness. Expose the lies. Uh, I truly believe, and I don't know which one it'll be, that one of the popes of Rome will be the final man of sin. I believe everything is setting up for this. Uh, I mean, I literally believe that we are in the last years, last hours of this age before Jesus parts the sky and the skies roll back like a scroll and his feet touch down on the Mount of Olives and he comes to crush Satan under our feet. But until that time comes, we need to pay attention. We need to warn people of what's coming. We need to warn people of what the scriptures state about the man of sin. Expose the lies. Ephesians 5.11 doesn't say you're being judgmental or mean if you're exposing heresy and you're exposing lies. People may call you judgmental and persecute you for it. Ephesians 5.11 uh, tells us to do such a thing. Have nothing to do with these lies, but expose them. And I'm here to tell you that if you're Jewish uh, and you're listening to this video, Jesus came for you first. It says to the Jew first and also for the Gentile. As Gentiles, we've been grafted in to Israel. Okay, so this is God's gift to us as Gentiles through his one and only son, Yahshua. Yahshua, meaning Jesus, I mean, God saves. And Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah 9, 6, which I know is not read in a lot of the synagogues. And when I was in Israel last year, I was told this by many precious Israelis that they do not read Isaiah 9, 6 in the synagogues. Isaiah 9, 6 says that when the child to be born would come into the world, meaning Jesus, Yahshua, 
His name would be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And no man comes into the Father except through him. And when Philip asked Jesus at the Last Supper, Lord, please show us the Father, Jesus responded very interestingly. He said, Philip, why do you ask to see the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen and known the Father. I and the Father are one, Jesus said. So there is no salvation apart from Yeshua. He is the Messiah. He is the promised one that all the prophets wrote about through Isaiah, Malachi, Jeremiah, all the way back to Genesis when God said that the seed of the woman would be born and crush Satan. Uh, this promised seed would come through the line of David. Uh, uh, the virgin, uh, that God himself in Isaiah chapter 7 says that God himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and bear a son. And in Isaiah 9, 6, this son to be born will be called the mighty God, the everlasting father. I encourage you, if you've not read these scriptures, to look them up. Jesus is the only way. Again, I want to read you these scriptures. Jesus said in Matthew uh, 8, 11 again, I'm sorry, 8, 12, but the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. The sons of the kingdom, he was speaking to Jews here. And that includes Gentiles as well, okay? Gentiles that are unbelieving at the coming of the Lord or, or their life ends before Jesus comes back. You will die in your sin unless you believe who he says he is. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way apart from him. Uh, in closing, let me read these to you again. Matthew 17, 5. The Father is speaking here to Jesus' Jewish followers. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It doesn't just mean let his words go in one ear and out the other. Pay attention to what he's saying and live by what Jesus is saying. That's what he's saying here. In John 8, 24, Jesus said, speaking to the Jews, unless you believe who I say I am, you will die in your sin. And remember, he said that, uh, speaking to many of the religious leaders of his day, you are of your father, the devil. And they said, no, Abraham is our father. Uh, we're, we're good to go. God is, is our spiritual father because Abraham's our physical father. And Jesus said, no, you brood of vipers, okay? You are of your father, the devil. And he, he flat out told him that. And who was he speaking to? The Jews. So for the Pope to come out and say that the Jews don't need Jesus, that they're already a part of God's universal salvation plan, this is a lie of Satan. Okay, and unless you know the words of Jesus in the scriptures, you will be deceived by this man. Unless you believe who I say I am, you will die in your sin. Romans 1.16, the gospel is to go out to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. John 14.6, no one, whether Jew or Gentile, comes unto the Father except through me. And the scripture says that Jesus came to his own and his own did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, to those who did believe on his name, gave he the power, or the right, some translations say, to become the sons of God. And remember, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, a Jewish leader, at night, telling him, unless you are born again of God's spirit, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. He didn't preach to the Jews of his day that because Abraham's your father, uh, you're set to go. You don't need to believe in me. I only came for the Gentile nations. You don't need to believe in me. Jesus never preached such a thing. Uh, this Pope is continuing to expose himself to those who know the scriptures, who know their Savior as the man of sin. Uh, he is the false prophet. Uh, he is the man of sin. And I believe the final man of sin will come out of the Vatican in Rome. I, I truly do. The city of seven hills, dressed in purple and scarlet, and holding that golden cup of abomination in her hand. I know life is busy, guys, but you need to pay attention and compare everything you hear whether it's a pastor in a pulpit, whether it's a book you're reading, a movie you're watching, or what's coming out of the news, you need to compare it to the Word of God. What did Jesus say? And stick only to that. Put blinders on, compare it to what your Savior said, and live by that. And only that. Compare everything you hear. Test it all. When Paul went preaching to the Bereans, did the Bereans just take Paul at his word? No. It says they were of noble character, more noble character than the rest. And search the scriptures to see if what Paul preached was true. Are you doing that? Whether you're a Catholic or Protestant, are you searching the scriptures and comparing what you hear at, uh, to the scriptures to see if it's true? Are you just taking what preachers, the Pope, or a pastor out of the pulpit says to you simply because they've got credentials and wear the right vestments? That's not enough in my book. I don't respect that. I respect a, a man or woman who loves the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength knows the word of God and lives only by what Jesus says and proclaims it boldly and stands on his word. Let every man be a liar and God the truth. God bless you. Keep watching. Pay attention. Look up.